Cordai Johnson, and I'm visiting today with Andrew McGinn, who is a first-year MFA directing student, who is here to talk about the uh, latest production, a comedy, a straight-up pure comedy. Yes. Um, uh, opening. Pure is a strong word for it. <laughs> well, there's going to be a few laughs in there, given the Definitely. nature of this piece. And uh, opening at the Penthouse. The Penthouse Theater, yeah. Very good, very good. Um, I have to say from the onset, this is a play written by Steve Martin, the comic. And... I was visiting with one of our PhD students, Elizabeth Cohen. She used to work for Samuel French, so she told me, oh, that play, she said. Oh, that play. And apparently there's some kind of weird contract with Samuel French, the publisher of all this, that you're not supposed to use Steve Martin's name when you're talking about this play of Steve Martin's. And you can't use, like, uh, his image there, or there isn't somehow to be any sort of reference to Steve Martin, except his <laughs> name's all over the title. So, um, yeah. you know, he writes his play, but he wants to somehow distance himself from the play that he wrote. What's yeah. that about? Well, I think it might be the fact that he wants people to be able to focus on the events of the play, the interaction between Picasso and Einstein, the fictional meeting of their meet of them coming together in the La Panagile to discuss their new discoveries, and I think possibly, uh, actually, the writing is so clearly written by Steve Martin that it could be uh, it could very easily go too far. I think you know, and there's several characters that could that I wondered whether or not we should actually dress them up like Steve Martin. <laughs> you know, because he's all over the play, and he's also such an icon of our time for great reason, I think. You know, that I think it probably could be, maybe just putting his image in there is, it would just be one step too far. But Steve Martin is all over this play, which is one of the best things about it, because everyone loves Steve Martin. And it's a play that has a few other famous figures in here. Yes. Namely, Picasso, of the title. Yes. And uh, a young fellow named Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Who also drifts in for drinks and theoretic <laughs> conversations about the nature of the universe. Albert That's Einstein fine. comes in with a lot to defend. He hasn't actually, at the time of this play, he hasn't actually published the special theory of relativity. And so here he walks into the La Pana Gilles, which is the place where El Greco and Picasso and Gertrude Stein come to lift a glass of absinthe and talk about the future of art. And in comes this, this guy who's still working in the patent office who says he's figured out everything. Well, you got a lot to defend in that in that environment. So he's got he's got a, he's got a lot to say about the curving of space and the relative uh, observation points, combining them into one central image that somehow Picasso finds rather interesting. Well, there's this beautiful exchange between those two figures because at one point there's a kind of there's a drawing match. Yes. And they both draw something very quickly yes, in a kind like of a western shoot. showdown way. Yeah. Quick draw. Yeah. And at the end of it, Einstein has this mathematic formula. Yeah. But for him. It's so beautiful. Yes. And then it's just like, well, these are letters. <laughs> these yes. are mathematical symbols. Yes. And yet Picasso on the other side seems to be invited into the beauty of this world as well. Yes. So they seem to share some kind of early 20th century aesthetic. Yeah, they do. They absolutely do. It's, it's Picasso actually coming to Einstein. Einstein sees a Picasso sketch and he instantly knows there's something about this guy. Wow. Picasso has to, it takes a little bit of time for Picasso to figure out that the lines of his drawings are uh, just as significant as the lines of a mathematical formula. And it's the meaning, the opinions behind them that give them their value. Um, it takes Picasso a little bit of time and a little bit of hard knocks to, in order to actually learn that, not only about uh, so he can appreciate Einstein's work, but for he, so that he can figure out um, the actual, the personal things that are churning underneath him and to be able to appreciate not just the practice of drawing, but the expression and what, and the various ways that he himself feels about the model that he is portraying in so many, from so many different angles. Um, appreciating the lines that he has with new meaning is what Einstein teaches him. And it's, it's and, beautiful and, it's, and funny. And it's such a lovely little setting for it. It's a French cafe. People are coming and going. Yeah. There's dancing going on. Old guy gets up to go pee a lot. And, and, and so yeah. there's this big head, kind of heady conversation, but the atmosphere is very, very sort of light and Parisian. Yes. And all that. It's light, it's Parisian, it's irreverent. Yeah. And there are people, people do not come to the Le Pan Agile to relax. People come to debate their manifestos and they come to debate art and they come to, and they come to size each other up. And sometimes they just have that god-awful painting of sheep hanging up <laughs> on the bar behind them. And they definitely have the most fantastic early 20th century coffee table book, which is the painting of a sheep in a fog. It's painted by someone's grandmother. So you have to hang this painting and put a big, straight, linear bar and uh, some rather three-dimensional 
tables and settings and such mm -hmm. into a world of a play that really says neither space nor time are square. <laughs> yes. So you chose yeah. staging this in a round theater. Yes. Tell us about that choice, directing this particular play uh -huh. in a theater in the round. Well, theater in the round about a play where space being curved is a major theme yeah, yeah. seems somehow fitting. Uh, now the challenge there is, like you said, you know, there's a bar, and so if you were like looking at it through a proscenium theater, it'd be very easy to imagine a bar. People are behind behind a bar, and people are um, talking to the to the bartender behind the bar, and everything is framed very well in a in a proscenium. Now in the round, you don't have that option because you're always going to be, you know, there are, you have to have you have to have the ability for any player mm -hmm. to turn around at any point in time. And if you stay in one spot, obviously you're gonna you're gonna cut people mm -hmm. off for a significant amount of time. So what we did is we, uh, we took the floor pattern uh, of the penthouse theater, which is actually an ellipse. It's not a pure circle, it's an ellipse. And we, uh, we went, you know what, if this is a play about space and a play about Einstein, the fact that it's an ellipse being the fundamental shape in galactic movement, galaxies, the orbits of planets, we could probably move with that. And this, um, just give us the details of this, this takes place um, someplace right at the beginning of the 20th century. 1904. Like, 1904. Yeah. And there's a sense with many of these figures here that they are looking ahead to the great sweep of what's ahead. Yes. The first line of the play is, there's something in the air tonight. And then it does these weird time bends yes. in which it actually just wrenches itself into quite late in yes. the 20th century. Meditations on, oh, commercial airlines. Yes. A line from a Marvin Gaye song <laughs> comes out. They just seem to erupt out of people. What's going on with this? Well, I th the author wants to give the sense that the future is actually coming for Picasso and Einstein. The future is reaching back through time and almost guiding Picasso's pencil and guiding Einstein's mind. Um, and it's doing so with a great deal of love. And who but Steve Martin, which we aren't to mention, I suppose. No, 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 no photos. Martin no, may no you stay. <laughs> I felt. Tell us when you open up. We open on uh, Sunday, May 15th, is our first preview. Okay. And then we go through May 29th okay. at the Penthouse Theater. Penthouse Theater. So, uh, Picasso at the La Pont Lanjou, coming to a theater near you very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>